Howdy everyone, I'm Knorr, I'm the live marketing producer here at Paradox, but more importantly with me I have... I'm Kai Clooney, I'm the creative director at Heartsuit Labs. Some of you might have seen recordings of this demo before, we showed it at E3, but you've only seen video and you didn't get that much commentary. So we thought we'd give you the full demo experience with Kai as a bonus. And Kai, you're going to explain to us what's actually going on. I'm going to try. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's see how this goes. So this is the point where we choose our thin blood discipline. Uh, we have the three corruptor and is bat based. Uh, mentalism is more of kind of telekinesis and uh, nebulation, which we're choosing is uh, your ability to turn into a mist, uh, which has a number of uh, implications, both for traversal, for combat, uh, but we'll get into those. At this point in the game, of course, this is a demo. Mm -hmm. uh, we're about around two hours in if you play quickly. What's happened at this point? Who are we? So at this point, you've learned a little bit. Uh, you know that you're a thin-blood vampire. Uh, you were created in an event called the Mass Embrace, which is uh, kind of akin to a vampire terrorist attack. There were a number of different vampires made. Um, you are the only one who has been identified by the vampire community. And right now, you kind of very much need to find, find some kind of safety by aligning yourself with one of the factions in the city. It, it turns out there's lots of things going on in Seattle. There are many factions to keep track of. Yes. And you, ne you need to be in with one of them if you yes, want to survive. It is, it is very much a political, viper, political viper's nest. Um, character whose apartment you're in right now, Dominic, he was another one of the Thin Bloods. Uh, he was a journalist. He was investigating uh, the mass embrace, and he was unfortunately killed right before this. Um, and so... He is effectively the player two weeks in the future. Uh, he knew things you didn't know, uh, and so you're kind of learning that through the conspiracy board and other things that he's put together. And I guess that adds another you know, layer of haste to the fact that Dominic knew all of this two weeks ago, and he died anyways. I, yeah. need, to, I need to solve something. Yeah, you are very much not in a safe place. <laughs> and right outside is Pioneer Square. Um, and I know that people that have gone to Seattle... Uh, and know of this place, they're like, this looks like Pioneer Square. It, it does. It very much does. Uh, this right here that we're looking at is the pergola. It's kind of the main architectural feature of Pioneer Square, and it features a lot uh, just in, you know, in the city's history. Uh, it is one of the most recognizable things in the city for tourists. Because at this point, if we'd played the game, we'd be able to talk to several different factions. Yeah. But for the sake of this demo, we're going to the atrium to talk to one of the factions. Yeah. Um, and of course, we've seen nightclubs before. Mm -hmm. um, well, in Bloodlines. In, so it's nice to see that they make a return in Bloodlines 2. We do still have nightclubs in, in Bloodlines 2. There are a few of them. Um, one important thing that is for, for players the first game is probably that, yes, that that, that dance is in there. Um, this isn't actually the original dance. This is one of our animators who we mo-capped, emulating the original dance. Um, he, uh, he is actually a master of a number of dances. <laughs> so there are options, and we have video of all of it. <laughs> and as we make our way through the club, you'll see the VIP section right here. We are definitely not cool enough for that yet because we're still a thin blood, but we'll get back to that. So this is Alif. Uh, Alif is uh, one of the representatives of one of the factions in the city. Uh, you've met her before. Um, she's basically told you that she may have work for you in the future. Uh, and now she has some things for you to take care of. So let's see what she has to say then. Sounds simple, I know. And while I would usually handle something like this myself, Slug has made it clear that he doesn't trust my people for whatever reason. So, can I count on you to get this done for me? Good. Here's the money. So I think one of the reasons why Slug Make doesn't sure trust Belief is because she is incredibly manipulative. Well, feel free to use. 
my experience with vampire generally is that when a vampire elder asks you to do something, you're, you know, you're better off doing it because the idea of not doing it is probably a lot worse for you. Especially if you're a thin blood. Exactly. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but at this point of the game, and we saw that in some of the dialogue choices, we could have been slightly more dismissive. Slightly, yes. Um, there are still a number of options of factions that you can interact with. Uh, so you do still kind of have a, a bit of choice in here, and you haven't committed to anyone yet. Um, in this case, we just basically told her we would, we would give it a shot. And uh, we got some information from her. Apparently, the Nosferatu might know where Slug is. So I think that's where we're headed right now. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we, at this point, do we already know where the Nosferatu so hang out? So the Nosferatu are in the Seattle Underground, uh, and this is where you meet up with them. Uh, but it's closed. It is closed. How <laughs> are we ever going to get inside? <laughs> if only we were okay with criminal behavior. Um, so, yes, in a lot of cases, you will have other options in how to enter spaces and all that sort of thing. So we do have uh, lock picking. Luckily, you're in a blind spot, which is sort of uh, it's an area that, out, that is outside of the masquerade. Uh, you can definitely get away with a lot of other things, both criminal and vampire, uh, in blind spots. Like opening the cash register and Always. stealing everything. Always open the cash register. So we're about to meet Samuel. Uh, Samuel is, is one of my favorite characters. Uh, he is a Nosferatu. He was, uh, he was kind of middle management in the early 80s uh, technology boom. And he's never really quite grown past that in terms of clothing. <laughs> I assume your handlers have sent you to find our smelly friend. No, they weren't. I can help. You can find Slug under the freeway. A bit south of the square in a place the locals call the jungle. He's smart enough to hide among the homeless down there, but not quite smart enough to do it well. You'll find the entrance near King Street Station, but you'll want to watch yourself. Slug is a coward, but he survived this long on his own, so he's bound to be a handful. He's also not the only one you'll need to look out for. Lots of unsavory animals in the jungle. Well, since you're so obviously capable, there is something... I'm shocked they, they want us to do Slug something. I know. It's it's unbelievable. Uh, so, among other things, the Nosferatu are very much the information brokers of the vampire world. Um, they live underground. You never know quite where they are, and they see things that no one else sees. And they pay attention to pretty much everything. So, they, they, they value information more than most of the other clans. Do this for us, and no one needs to know. And also, you'll notice that well, they're asking you if you can, can return Slug to them. Um, one thing about the Nosferatu is they they are definitely the most community-oriented of all the different vampire clans. Um, you know, they all know that they're kind of all in it together. They don't really have a whole lot of options outside of themselves and outside of the, the information that they traffic in. I like the fact that we'll think about it. We'll we'll, yeah. we'll see what, what we can do. Yeah. So, at this point, we talked to Nosferatu. We know that Slug is in the jungle, mm -hmm. uh, and that the jungle entrance is close to yeah. King Street Station. It is south of the square, next to King Street Station. Talking like someone who's from Seattle exactly. or lives there. If, if you're not from Seattle, we can put a circle with a triangle in it to help you along. Should yeah. we quickly go through the interface of what we see here? Yeah. The UI? So, at the top, we have the... Compass that can kind of help you out. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's also an indicator as to whether you're in a masquerade or blind spot. That's the eyeball with the X through it. Uh, on the bottom left, we have our current discipline. Um, that's surrounded by the amount of blood we have available to us. Uh, blood is everything. It's what you use to heal. It's what you use for disciplines. Um, it keeps you out of, uh, you know, it, it kind of keeps you sane. It, you know, it, the, the lack of blood will just, uh, you know, it'll start to build that hunger in you. Um, so, blood literally is everything in the game. Uh, next to that, we have the health indicator. Uh, the green section is, is normal health. Uh, we also have what's called aggravated damage. Um, aggravated damage uh, is not able to be healed by 
you know, normal blood healing, you'll, you'll definitely have to go back to your haven. I like that we're um, in a world where we can say normal blood healing. Yeah, normal blood healing, <laughs> you know, like you do. Uh, and then below that, we have what's called the frenzy meter. Um, depending on your level of humanity, that might grow uh, at different rates or your clan selection. Um, but frenzy is basically how close you are to succumbing to the beast. Uh, it has... It has obvious physical benefits. Um, you know, if you're in a fight and you frenzy, you're going to tear through people a lot faster. But if you succumb to frenzy, that's it. It's game over. Now, one of the other things I love about running around in Vampire is that you, we have this essentially parkour movement. Yeah. You know, we, we can we can scale uh, quite a few buildings. How much of that can you use in, in Seattle, as it were? Uh, you can use a little bit of it, but you definitely don't want to do too much right in front of uh, right in front of the wrong people. Um, you know, masquerade violations can stack, but uh, there's there's some actions that you'll take which will immediately you know anger police. Uh, you know, uh, the, the city will very much react to what you're doing in it. Um, as far as the as far as the movement itself, one of the things we wanted to establish very early was the idea of a, a core vampire competency. I guess. Um, you know, you're not just you're not just a you know you're you're not just a person who uses blood. You move faster. You hit harder. You can dash very quickly. You can climb up two stories. You can, you know, you definitely have this whole suite of physical abilities at your disposal that that normal humans wouldn't have. And that was something that was really important to us was to get the point across that you are you are superhuman from the get go. Uh, I guess that also kind of influenced how you designed certain areas, right? Now that you're no longer bound to, oh no, everyone has to go in through this building, through the front door, mm -hmm. you can go in through the second story window, that exactly. opens up the world quite a bit. Exactly, and that was, and that's something we would really want players to, to embrace, is you should be looking at the world as a vampire and not as a person. Um, a front door isn't always a front door, and a second story window is sometimes a front door. And I think, uh, because, of course, like I said, I don't know much about uh, Seattle, but I can see that we do, we have finally found the King S Street Station. Mm -hmm. The uh, uh, <laughs> the marker at the compass didn't lie, but it also means that you could, in theory, you know, play without the compass in the sense that they told you it was near King Street Station. Here's King Street Station. Yeah, and that is one thing we really try to do is, is the, the, the compass marker is... It is there if you need it, but we do want players the ability to sort of explore the world and, and definitely find new things, um, including uh, including quests. Um, you might walk through the world and find someone to talk to, and they might give you something to do. And even though the sidewalk's closed, we don't care about that. No, we don't care. We're a creature of the night. <laughs> the jaywalking is still strongly discouraged. <laughs> And so now we get to kind of some of the more uh, seedier, quiet, covered parts. I mean, clearly, if if they straight away are like, hang on, you shouldn't be here. And uh, <laughs> we're like, well, you shouldn't be here either. So. Yeah. So that's that was Skewer. That's one of our uh, thaumaturgy powers. And I guess we should mention, like we said at the start, this is a demo. Uh, both uh, Thaumaturgy and Potence, mm -hmm. I think, is the one this character is running with. You wouldn't necessarily have those uh, full blood powers at this point in the game. No, at this point, you would really still be limited to thin blood powers. Um, once you join a full, once you join a full clan, then you have the ability to to get some of the more uh, powerful disciplines. But you know, like you said, it is a demo, and we wanted to show some things off and let you know kind of what your power levels will be later. So that must be our guy. Well, he seems suspicious. We should probably go after him. And there he goes. Oh, he's running away. <laughs> yeah, of course, he's not going to stand still for us, unfortunately. Um, so even this space right here affords you quite a few options. Um, nebulation, generally speaking, you're looking for moving air. Uh, mentalism... You're going to be looking for things that are blocking, uh, or things that can be picked up and moved to kind of open, open up uh, new routes, um, and then and Corruptor, and you're looking for you know gaps, uh, places where you couldn't normally jump, but that you might be able to glide across. Uh, since we're using nebulation, we're going to be kind of looking around for HVAC systems, moving air, fans, uh, and that sort of thing. Because of course, slug being the horrible. You know, 
thin blood that he is, he locked a gate. He did. So we have to find him. It's or rude. <laughs> very rude. But luckily, there's a fan here. Exactly. And so you can kind of see the entry, uh, the entry and exit points of the of the nebulation fan. So here we've quietly come up behind somebody. Uh, I suppose it's as good a time as any to feed on them. Perfect time to eat. So this is what's called a full feed. Um, there are three types. There's a partial feed, which which really gives you negligible amounts of blood, and actually they live and they can, you know, it's it's usually interrupted during combat. Mm -hmm. uh, that was called a full feed. What that does is that gives you more resonance. Uh, as opposed to a fatal feed, which kills the target and kind of takes a hit to your humanity, but you get more blood. There's a whole concept of you are what you eat um, in that we've that we've really been pushing. Uh, and the idea is that not all blood is the same. Um, you know, these these characters might be filled with delirium, others might be filled with rage, and uh, by drinking different types of resonance, uh, we're treating it as sort of a secondary type of experience, um, you know, that kind of further allows you to customize your character based on your preferred tastes. And that, I guess, is partly what we see here when we using heightened senses. The world kind of goes uh, a bit different. We see and we see the heart and the the veins, and those are differently uh, colored depending on. I'm guessing what type of... Yeah, uh, what type of resonance they have. It also kind of lets you see that things, uh, you know, lootable items, that sort of thing. It is it is very much a, a, it's a heightened perception kind of thing. Um. And I guess that can be useful because we're going to come up to a point real soon here where we use that. We've lots of humans around. Mm -hmm. Let's use our heightened senses and see if we can get some extra information. So what are we what are we uh, kind of? Um, you'll get a sense of you know there's delirium there's some rage. Yeah, so uh, red is rage. Yes, red yeah. is rage. In the case of Lurk, we have lots lots of, of rage. Uh, yes, uh, that is that is a very angry dude. And um, Lurk would be that character uh, in front of us that we don't necessarily know about. Okay. But we have played the demo, L so he, we looks, he looks like a Lurk. He looks like a Lurk, <laughs> and also we need to find a way through his his building. So in this case, of course, we could go in. But having realized that there's a lot of frenzy, a lot of humans there, maybe we can be use a bit more finesse, yeah. be a bit sneaky, go through another vent. Mm -hmm. Luckily, we have manipulation, so we have some options here, and we can kind of choose to avoid going in crowbars blazing. In this case, this kind of gives us a, a bit of a bird's eye view of the space and lets us... Uh, let's just sort of take stock of things before we dive right in. Um, you won't always be able to avoid combat, but in many cases you'll be able to choose how you engage it. So in this case we're trying to get through Lurk's building uh, because we're pretty sure Slug went through this way. Yeah, we um, definitely have to get through this in order to find Slug, so we can either, we can we can maybe try and find a back way through. And I feel like the nice thing about stealth is that it does give us an easy way to, you know, top up exactly. if you're a bit peckish. Exactly. And you always have the option of just smashing people in the face with crowbars. <laughs> because uh, we've come up against humans so far, and... They're not that big a threat. No, humans don't pose much of a challenge, even to a thin blood vampire. Um, when you get into the vampire races um, or the vampire types, uh, and even even other thin bloods, they get a little more challenging. But humans are basically, uh, as a thin blood, humans are very little challenge. As a full blood, humans are effectively health packs. We uh, picked up, picked ourselves up a shotgun, which of course uh, there are uh, other weapons than the crowbar available yes. in in game. Uh, we also looted a bunch of items. Mm -hmm. What uh, what can we do with those sweet sweet wallets? Uh, so wallets and debit cards and and that sort of thing, and bags of you know whatever. 
Uh, really nice pen. Yeah, really nice pens uh, can be sold to Dale, uh, who's your next door neighbor. Uh, he is kind of the he is kind of the shut-in vampire who lives next door. Um, he will buy things from you. Uh, he will sell things to you. He will kind of act as your kind of guide from a distance to the world of to the world of darkness. But he does not want to get involved with any of it. So this this is kind of the part of the jungle where people don't go. Uh, this is scary, even for the jungle. I think we saw Slug's shadow there, so let's chase after it. He's faster than he looks. Hmm. So here you can see we've got actually quite a few options uh, on how to deal with him. Um, you know, some of these will come from uh, disciplines you have available. Some of these will be points you put into abilities. Some of them will just be based on your build or your clan. Uh, but we try to give you as many options as possible when it comes to talking to people. You're making the right move. This city, no loyalty at all. Doesn't matter what you do for them. Do they ever bring you up in the ranks? No, just use you when it's convenient. We're all fighting over scraps here. So one other thing that, that might be worth noting is even though you did have enough uh, to use one of the dialogue options on him, uh, you it doesn't always help you out. <laughs> you, no. can, you can still mess it up. Uh, so the, the dialogue options are definitely not always a win button. So you, you do need to kind of follow up on your choices. No, because that's usually what happens, right? When I come up to dialogue option, I'm like, I have the skill for this. Exactly. Let's pick that straight away. Yeah. That's not, you're saying that that's not necessarily always. It's not, ex it's not always a win. Um, you know, we, it, it, and that's one of the reasons why we try to have so many choices. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it, it, it's, more of, it's more about expressing who you, you know, yeah. the, the build you've done rather than just being a, a win button in dialogue. And you know what? I feel like Slug reminds me of someone, especially when it comes to the voice, you yes, know? Yes, yes, that is the voice of one Brian Matsuda, uh, who's, who is, uh, if you don't know, he is the lead writer on the game. It might make it harder for you to deal with Slug. And one of the other things I wanted to point out here is that we do see some extra interface indicators. We got some yellow uh, triangles popping up, yep. which... So the yellow triangles uh, indicate incoming attacks. Um, in first person, it's always good to kind of get your bearings and know where people are coming from. Mm -hmm. um, and as a vampire, you know, you have that sort of heightened sense of, of things in, in imminent danger. This is, I think, the first time we've uh, seen several uh, humans attack us at uh, once. And mm -hmm. this is where, it, in theory, could get scary, right? Yes. Because they also have uh, firearms. They do have firearms. Uh, firearms in general is no, are not as much of a problem for vampires as they are a human. You can actually take quite a bit of damage from firearms before they really start to become a problem. But in numbers, humans with guns are definitely something you do have to worry about. Oh, and taking taking care of his human friend brings uh, brings out Slug, I yep, guess. And, and now we're left to deal with Slug. Uh, so Slug is a thin blood, so he's definitely got uh, he's definitely a little more dangerous than than your typical human. Um, you and he are about on the same level power yeah. wise. So this yeah. is this is a fairly significant fight for this for this early in the game. And I like the fact that you both essentially none of you are trying to firearms because you realize who the other person is. Exactly. But a good way to finish Slug off, as you saw, was the Fist of Cain, which is uh, one of the Potent's, uh, potent's powers. Uh, Fist of Cain is a single punch that does a large amount of damage, more than your typical punch. Um, it'll usually kill most humans in one shot, and it's a good way to kind of deal a lot of damage to tougher enemies all at once. It didn't, it didn't kill him, it just brought him into a very groveling state. Yeah, it's Slug, Slug is definitely, he's definitely a survivor. He knows when he's done. Uh, so he's gonna he's gonna try and talk his way out of it. And here we can see we have another one of those uh, dialogue options, humanity, mm -hmm. which I I think is interesting. So it's not just necessarily the skills that you 
the side two boost, it's also, you know. It's also how you play the game. Uh, you know, we talked earlier a little bit about the difference between uh, partial, full, and fatal feeds. Uh, the more fatal feeds you do, the more, and the more you kind of, you know, the more inhumane actions you yeah. take, the more you kind of move towards that beast. Uh, we really wanted to make sure that it wasn't a humanity good, beastie bad. Uh, we wanted to have benefits for both. So, you know, you might have some social okay. options if you're more on the humanity is. side. If you're more on the on the beast know. side, then you have more access to frenzy and you, you know, you might, uh, you definitely tend to move towards the combat and the aggression spectrum. Because yeah, that's one of the things that always intrigued me about vampires, is that balance between, you know, all this extra, like, non-human power you have while still trying to keep your humanity. And like you said earlier, I guess it depends a lot on what type of character you're playing this playthrough. Exactly. And, you know, for a game called Vampire, where you play a monster, humanity is not always the best road to go. Thank you. I like how we decided to not promise that we wouldn't kill him. We just like, let's just skip that. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> even if we decided not to turn him over the Nosferatu, we, you know, we did decide to let him live. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we're the ni we're the nice guy here. Mm -hmm. I mean, other than you know all the human pe uh, people we uh, yeah we, you we know all the murder yeah. all the yeah. murder we just did, but it's fine. <laughs> Except for all the murder, we're we're the nice guys here. <laughs> so in this case, we chose to let Slug go, which you know, I, Brian's a friend. Yes, uh, I, I think it is a testament to his performance, though, that most of the most of the other people, a lot of people, kill Slug. Yeah. Uh, and that brings me up to another thing I wanted to talk about is we're letting Slug go, and I'm sure we'll run into other similar situations mm -hmm. on other missions or other quests, uh, not without giving any spoilers to specifically Slug. Might that come back and bite us in the ass? It could. Um, some of the factions may want you to kill Slug. Some of the factions may not care about the information. Some of them may need the information. Uh, you can still you still have all these actions available to you whether or not it's what they asked you to do uh, so you you know you you may be t you may not be telling them what they want to hear when you return to them uh, at the same time you can also uh, you can also lie to them uh, yeah you know especially if you choose to uh, if you choose to turn slug over to the Nosferatu. And I mean, while, like we said at the start, we're definitely in a position where we need to find some allies to survive the night. Yep. Uh, we're also not really allied to anyone but ourselves at this point. At this point, you are still very much a free agent. Uh, but you, you, really, you really want to uh, not make these vampires angry. Unless you want to make these vampires angry. But as we can see from the dialogue choices here, we don't necessarily need to tell her that we have the data. Mm -hmm. yep, we, we do have the option to tell her otherwise. Yeah. Maybe there are some other faction that we don't have in this demo that might be interested in knowing about that data. Possibly. Possibly. Who knows? We will. Early 2020. <laughs> That's why I'm in marketing. <laughs> and I am obviously not. <laughs> <laughs> so we completed the undertaking uh, there and that was the full uh, E3 demo and this is just one way to play this specific scenario in the full game like we said there's going to be more factions that yes. you need to contend with yeah, more factions, more options uh, more opportunities to piss people off or make people happy uh, it's definitely something that's important to us is making sure that there's a lot of, there's a lot of choices uh, in here so, uh, Kai, thank you so much. All right, thank you.